engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. I'm back. I told you guys I was coming back after Thanksgiving. No, I didn't lose my job or anything like that. <laughs> Welcome. It's Eric Erickson here from the resurgent.com and news 955 AM 750 WSB. Uh, this is a special podcast. As I have told people, I was going to do this podcast because normally I try to do this every year on the radio. And then what happens every year? I've been doing this now since 2011. And every year the same thing happens. I do this, and then we get a flood of calls from people saying, do it again, do it again, do it again. I missed it, I missed it. Now I can just say, you got to go to the podcast. And it's a good way to promote podcast subscribers. Before I get into this, if you are a podcast subscriber, will you please leave a review at iTunes, Stitcher, uh, Google Play, wherever you get the podcast? Uh, Jonah Goldberg just started his podcast, The Remnant, and he's already got like a thousand reviews from people. The the more reviews you people give me, the better it is for me in, in show promotion and all of that. So same, shameless self-promotion here. Now, of course, I do get like hundreds of thousands of people listening a day on the radio, but nonetheless, they're not going to hear this. This is just for podcast subscribers. So the question is, why is Christmas on December 25th? And I bet you know the commonly taught theory that Christians placed Christmas on December 25th to co-op Saturnalia, the, the midwinter festival, or maybe it was Saul Invictus, the festival of the unconquered sun. The theory went that Christians wanted to get heathens to convert by co-opting their own holidays. And they could say, for example, Saul Invictus, the unconquered sun. See, see, Jesus is the son of God. He's the unconquered sun. He conquered death. This festival is really about him. That's the way all of us have been taught, and there are many famous noted scholars who believe this, and there is some credibility to it, but there is a problem with it as well. It sounds a lot more convincing than it is, really, because none of these theories really started up until about the 12th century when you started getting people questioning the basic tenets of Christianity. It only became popular, though. When comparative religion became trendy in the 18th century in Germany, going to the earliest church fathers to look for evidence of Christmas, uh, it was initially celebrated in some pockets, particularly in Egypt. But what you find is that well before the Feast of the Unconquered Sun has been really created and imposed on the Roman Empire, Christians were already noting that Jesus' birthday was December 25th. So the question is why? Now, in Egypt, less than 300 years after Christ's death, Christians were celebrating his birth in the spring. The biblical archaeological societies noted that the earliest references to Christmas actually come about 200 AD at a time Christians weren't incorporating other religious traditions into their own. So Christians were specifically not trying to co-opt Roman pagan holidays at this time, they were trying to be completely distinct and, and shunning other gods. Remember, this was still a time of persecution for the church. So they weren't doing, they weren't incorporating things like Saturnalia and Saul Invictus in their apologetics. By 300 AD, uh, more and more Christians were celebrating his birth around December 25th. Now, here's the thing. Within 100 years, Christianity was a on the calendar as a record, as a holiday, Christians looked to December because the early church was more interested in his death. And that's why the early church, by about 200 AD and even before then, in some cases 100 AD scattered about, they were putting Jesus' birth in December or what would be December on our modern calendar. Now, why was this? Well, for Christians, the death and resurrection of Jesus or what matter to the gospel. The, the birth is somewhat ancillary. Now, I would tell you there are three per boundaries for being a Christian. One is a death and resurrection. Another is a virgin birth. And a third is a trinity. Uh, you got to believe those three things to be an authentic Orthodox Christian. Now, there are some like Mormons, for example, say they're Christians uh, and they don't believe in a trinity or Jehovah's Witnesses, for example. Um, now, Orthodox Christianity would tell them they're not Christians. You got to have a virgin birth. You got to have a resurrection after death and you got to have a trinity. But in the earliest days of the church, the big one was the resurrection. 
That is what the faith hangs his head on. That's what Paul talks about, that that they are the ones who should be pitied if, if they've hung their head on a resurrection that wasn't true. Now, we got to go back to 200 AD here to Tertullian. Tertullian, very famous Christian apologist, Tertullian of Carthage. And remember, the early church was vastly more interested in when Jesus died in the resurrection than they were when he was born. In fact, birthdays were pagan celebrations. Um, The early church did not celebrate birthdays because that's what the Romans did. They wanted to celebrate Jesus' resurrection, so they were very interested in when the date was. And Tertullian of Carthage, around 200 AD, reported that the calculation of the 14th of Nisan in the year Jesus died was the equivalent to March 25th on the Roman calendar. Now, that's Andrew McGowan. He's at the Biblical Archaeological Society. So March 25th on our current calendar, that's when Tertullian of Carthage concluded based on his research that Jesus had died. That would be the day of the crucifixion. Now, the math here is really, really, really simple. And this is how we get Christmas on December 25th. The Jews of the day and the Christians of the day, because many of them were of Jewish origin, they held to a Jewish mystical belief that the day a prophet died was the day he was conceived. So if a prophet died on March 25th, he had to have been conceived on a March 25th years prior to his death. So if Jesus died on March 25th, then the date of his holy conception was March 25th. So fast forward nine months, where do you go for March 25th? If the date that Jesus died was the date he was conceived and that was March 25th, well, then you fast forward nine months. It was now well known by then that nine months was the, the uh, period uh, of from conception to delivery. Well, you wind up on December 25th. So early church history held as fact that prophets and martyrs of the church were conceived on the day they died, just as the Jews had. And if Jesus had died on March 25th, it was the anniversary of his conception. You go forward nine months. Well, here's the thing. Separately, this was the Western church in Tertullian of Carthage. The Eastern part of the church was also trying to figure out when Jesus was conceived to figure out when he died. And Luke 1 tells us Zacharias, John the Baptist's father, yeah, John the Baptist's father, was in the priestly division of Abijah. Based on the calculation of this and the division of priests in the temple in 70 AD, they could calculate when the temple fell. And presuming that the priests had monitored and maintained the temple all the way back, well, a number of early Christian historians presume Zacharias would have been in the temple In early October, late September, early October, later historians speculate it might have been June, but the Gospel of Luke tells us when Zacharias left the temple, his wife conceived. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. So six months after Zacharias left the temple, according to scripture, would be March, Mary's time of conception. Fast forward nine months again, we get the end of of March would have been um, when they would have speculated Mary's conception. So fast forward nine months and we're back in December. So the earliest church fathers in the East and the West were all settling on the end of March. They all respected Tertullian. He gave us March 25th as Christ's death, believing fully Christ's death would occur on the anniversary of his conception. The early church reinforced the belief well before any written accusations or evidence of the church incorporating Sol, uh, Sol Invictus or Saturnalia had been a part of its celebrations. Now, it's important to note here, most scholars reject setting Christ's birth to Zacharias' temple service because of problems related to really knowing when he was there. But that's irrelevant to what the early church thought. The early church concluded Zacharias was in the temple and six months later, the angel appeared to Mary. They worked their way back based on the class of priest who was tending the temple when it fell to when they thought that it, all of this had happened and they concluded up Mary would have conceived at the end of March. 
And if she conceived at the end of March, Jesus died at the end of March. And oh, hey, this guy we all respect, Tertullian, he's calculated that the date of Jesus' death is March 25th. This works with what we were doing, so it must have been March 25th. Therefore, let's count forward nine months, uh, December 25th. That's Jesus' birthday. So now there are a couple of things here. The church fathers could have gotten it wrong. But the question is whether they thought they got it wrong, and they were pretty sure they were right. The earliest Christians didn't celebrate birthdays, but by around 300 AD, there was growing evidence. The church thought Jesus' birthday was around December 25th, and as Constantine took over and Christianized the empire, birthdays did start being celebrated, even though they originally were pagan. Now, is there any sort of truth to the Saul of Victus? There are a lot of scholars who believe this. And there is a body of evidence that Christians looked at Saul Invictus and said, well, you know, God reflects himself in nature. The pagans, Roman says, would have a sense of God. They put this feast of the unconquered son on December 25th. Well, you know, all of this works for us. So we are going to have Jesus's birthday there. Now, what's important here, though, and please remember this is that the date of Jesus' birth is not important. What is important is that Jesus is. So you don't need to hang your hat on a birthday. Hang your hat on Jesus. He is. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And he came to this earth made flesh and he lived and was tempted and tried and died as a human and rose again from the dead, conquering death. That's what's important. When we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate one of the pillars of Christian thought, a virgin birth. See, God had to be made flesh. Because back in Genesis 15, God makes a covenant with Abraham. And he tells Abraham he will number him as the stars, and he will inherit this land. And those who come after him, they will cover the earth. And God puts Abraham asleep. Because Abraham was going to enter this covenant with God, he cut these animals apart, he put them in halves, and Abraham was going to walk between the halves. And this is how they made covenants in the day. The the servant would cut animals in half and walk between the body parts and say to the king, I'm going to make this covenant with you. And if I break my covenant, I'm going to wind up like these animals. In a time where there wasn't really a written language, there weren't, wasn't a lot of literacy. This was a visible demonstration of what was going to happen to the servant if he broke the covenant with the king. The king was going to make all these promises if the servant kept his word, kept his end of the bargain. And if the servant didn't, the servant was going to die. That's what Abraham did. He cut these animals in half and he was prepared to walk between the parts. But before he could walk between the parts, God put him to sleep. And in the sleep, he saw a vision of a burning, smoking pot going between the parts, a vision of God. God saying to Abraham, no, Abraham, if you don't keep your end of the deal, I'm going to die for you. That was well understood. Abraham was going to play his part and uphold his end of the bargain and was willing to die. But God put him to sleep, and God kept Abraham's end of the bargain. God told Abraham, I'm going to give you all these things, and if you don't keep your end of the bargain, I'm going to die. Well, Jesus, coming to earth in human form and died on a cross, was God keeping his part of the bargain with Abraham. We needed God in human form. That's what matters. Whether Christmas is December 25th or December 20th or or June 1st, it doesn't matter. What matters is Jesus is. So when you get into your holiday season and you're all wrapped up on presents and trees and decorations as I am right now, trying to put up the lights, find the broken light bulb, replace the light bulb, get the lights burning again, remember why we're doing this. It's the celebration of our Lord coming to be with us, Emmanuel, God with us. As you get into the Christmas season, don't fret about the perfect lights and the perfect present. Just remember Jesus and all will be well. God bless. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe via Stitcher, Google Play, iTunes. You can text the word WAKE, 
or rather, I'm sorry, you can text the word show to 444-999. Text wake to 444-999 if you want a copy of my book. If you want to subscribe to the podcast in general, text the word show to 444-999 and I'll send you back links to Google Play and iTunes. You guys have a great, great day.